friends, Heidi here from Rain Country Homestead. God is good all the time. Today I'm going to show you how you can make any kind of milk out of any kind of nuts or seeds. It's a super easy process and I guarantee you're going to love this. Alright, so let's get started. All right, to make your nut milk, you only need, you only really need two ingredients. That's whatever nuts you're going to use or seeds. This is hemp seed. I eventually I'm going to make a hemp seed milk. It can be coconut. These can be sliced or they can be whole. It can be Brazil nuts. It can be cashews. Um, I've made coconut, almond, Brazil, and cashew milk. And then the cashew milk, it, there was something about it I didn't like, but I couldn't remember exactly what it was. But um, it seemed like it tasted pretty good. Um, Brazil nut was excellent, almond milk was excellent, the coconut milk is excellent, and again, I hope to try, I'm going to eventually try hemp seed milk and see how I like that. So, and then the other ingredient is a, a good healthy water, filtered spring water, filtered braiding water, um, you can use distilled water, again, I recommend you stay away from your city tap water, if you have good well water, use that. Alright, then you're going to take, this is a two cup measuring cup, you're going to fill, you're going to cover cover whatever nuts you have in there so you have until you have at least you have two cups. You're going to take a clean washcloth, uh, just a piece of fabric or whatever and you're going to cover that. If you definitely if you have a lot of problems with pests, you may want to put a rubber band on there just to tighten it down. This is mostly just to keep keep dust and whatever out. Because this is going to sit for a while. Now, since I'm using sliced almonds, these will not need to soak for, for too long. Two to three hours for sliced. Same thing with coconut. An hour is typically sufficient. Um, but, you know, I recommend going a couple hours on the coconut and the, and the hemp seed. Now, if you're using whole nuts, like whole Brazil nuts, whole almonds, whole cashews, you need to soak them for at least eight hours. And so it's good to start the process maybe the night before or early in the morning, depending on when you want to finish the process. So there you have it. I'm going to let that sit. I'm going to go get some other chores done, and then I'll come back and show you the next step. All right. The almonds have been soaking for a little better than three hours now, and we're ready to move on to the next step. So I'm going to show you how that goes. All right. I want to show you. Another good indicator that they're about ready is if you look closely, you can see that the, the water looks a little bit cloudy. And again, these are sliced, so I can get by with two to three hours of soaking time. If they were whole almonds, you'd want to soak them overnight, at least eight hours. But you can go up to 24 hours without any problem. All right, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my blender this up a little bit so you can see just a little better here and I'm just going to pour this whole shebang in there now some people would say you need to rinse them me as long as you're using good organic olives or olives there I go again um almonds I'm you know you shouldn't have to worry about that because I feel like as much as the of the good stuff you can keep into your nut milk the better and you just just hang on. I know this may look kind of murky and ugly, but just just stay with me here, folks. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to blend this up. pretty good for the moment. Now, if if you're just going to use this for baking, um, I wouldn't add other than topping the water off. Because your goal is to try to get this up to five cups. So that once you strain out the almond pieces, you'll have a quart. But if you end up with less than a quart, then it's just a nice thicker milk. Um, 
So anyway, if you're just going to use this for baking, I would just leave it as is. I wouldn't put any additions in there. Just the water and the almonds. Now you can see it's getting more white. It's still going to have an almond color to it. Um, coconut milk turns out pure white, but you can, you can see it's getting whiter. I'm going to go ahead just to make sure I'm getting as much out of these almonds as possible and I'm going to run this for a little bit longer. It's just, you, I don't have a set time. I just watch it and, and uh, you know, I can see some of these chunks in here look like they could be a little bit bigger. This is probably good enough, but just, just to be sure, I'm going to go ahead and run it a little bit longer. All right, now, I've got this really full. <laughs> now, if you're gonna use it for drinking, or um, you may like it just like this. It's just almond milk. But if you're gonna use it for drinking, you may wanna add a little bit of honey, or molasses, or coconut sugar, whatever healthy type of sweetener you prefer, and then a little bit of um, vanilla. And you, as you can see, this is my own homemade vanilla extract. So I'm just going to pour in the vanilla, you know, for putting on cereal or whatever, or using in your coffee or um, just drinking straight. It's kind of nice to have that little extra flavor. And then for the honey, I would say, just like some of the other stuff I've said, play with it a little bit, start small and build up from there. So I'm just going to use since we don't do a lot of sweet, I'm just going to use a good tablespoon of this honey. This is raw clover honey. My favorite is the raw blackberry honey. That stuff is amazing. Um, and, uh, well, I don't know if that's necessarily my favorite. It's very good honey, but there are a couple people in, the in our area that keep bees that I've got honey from. And... I couldn't tell you which one I liked best. They each, they were up from different parts of the town. You know, one was more from the, from the east side and one was more from the west side. And that difference, well, I would say they're probably a good 15 miles apart. That difference made a very different tasting honey in each of them, but they were both incredibly delicious. All right, so I'm gonna put this back on and I'm gonna blend it some more. I still got honey stuck to the side, but this is one thing, one reason I don't always like using honey for such things because it tends to stick. But I was just in the mood, if I was going to sweeten it up, I was more in the mood for honey. I find that coconut sugar and something like this might make it just slightly the flavor a little off. There's certain things coconut sugar works really good in, certain things it doesn't. All right, the next step, so you can see I have my batter bowl, this is an eight cup batter bowl. And, you know, basically, which is a measuring cup. I love this thing. I use it a lot. And you might recognize this piece of fabric from the grape juice making video. And I've got it clipped to the sides of the bowl with just clothespins. And you want to make sure that when you cover your bowl, you have that indented down deep enough that as you pour, it's not going to overflow and go over the sides. You still don't want to pour very fast. There, and now there's all the almond pulp going in there. Now, there's a one of my subscribers that 
said that they ended up with kind of a sludge. Well, I'm guessing they may not have. I'm not sure, Winter, if this is the case or not. You may not have done this step. Um, to have a nice, clean uh, nut milk, you, you really have to do the filtering. All right, then I get a hold of the sides one by one. So I take each clip off. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can just sit here and do it by hand. You'll, you'll want to squeeze it out real good first. It squeezes through real good. Now, I only have, I'm using a single layer. I have this piece of fabric big enough that I can go double layer for extra filtering. Um, but I'm not really concerned about that. Um, if you find it still seems a little uh, sludgy, um, then you may want to do another filter, like run it through again. But here, and this milk just looks so creamy and yummy. And obviously because of the husks on the almonds, you are going to have a little bit of almond color. So when you go and you buy almond milk at the store and it's pure white, that makes me wonder. Coconut should be pure white, but not almond milk, not Brazil nut milk. Unless you carefully, meticulously, painstakingly took every little, scraped every little brown piece off there. But... Why should that matter? There's good, healthy stuff in that, too. Now, I've actually, this was pretty easy. I've got this squeezed down to a nice, firm pulp. And there, we've got the coconut milk. Hang on just a moment. First, I realized I called it coconut milk. Again, it's because I've had all of them in my head. The hemp seed milk, the coconut milk, the almond milk. So I've got my nice little funnel again. I might actually have put way too much water and I'm going to end up with more than a quart. And I'm fine with that because this looks really rich. I think I had more than a cup of almonds anyway. So there is your wonderful, rich, beautiful, mm, smells nice almond milk. Let me throw a lid on that. Or, and then I'm going to get a little glass. going to stick this in the refrigerator. I better mark it though because I, I keep a lot of milk, the goat milk in jars and yeah. And I'm going to pour myself, I'm not a milk drinker, but when it comes to nut milks, I'll drink it. Now as I'm getting to the bottom, I do see there's still a little bit of pulp, a little bit of pulp left, but it shouldn't be that bad. Look at that. It's nice and creamy. It's beautiful. Mmm, tastes great. All right, now I'm not done yet. The process of making the milk is finished. This, this is done. This is ready for however you want to use it. Now, you can use less water and have an even have a richer milk, uh, or however you want to do it. Just again, like anything else, I I I, I explain to you. This is just a starting point. You can play with it and do whatever, whatever you want. I mean, especially the fact that you can take any nut, whatever your favorite nut is, and you can do that with. Super easy. Now, this, what do I have here? I have all this pulp, and people are going, wow, I'd hate to throw all this out. What a waste. There's absolutely no need to throw this out. This stuff is beautiful. You, <laughs> you can use this in cookies, breads, cakes, pancakes, just as it is if you use it right away. Or what you can do is you can um, put it on a, I've actually put it in the winter time when I've done this, I've put it on cookie sheets, um, you know, the stoneware baking sheets, and then put it on top of my wood stove on a trivet so it wouldn't get too hot on the bottom. And, and just dried it out and turned it into a flour. I did that with the, uh, with the coconut milk when I made coconut. I haven't tried it with the almond because typically what I do, I haven't made this in a while, is I would just, like that day or the next day, make cookies or pancakes with this. So I think what I'm going to do tomorrow morning is I'm going to make my husband pancakes for breakfast. And I'm going to use this almond pulp 
in the pancake mix and whatever I don't use because I'm not going to use strictly this or the pancakes won't hold together because I'll, I'll also use the whole wheat flour and you know eggs obviously and all that stuff that goes in your pancake mix um, but this is going to make a nice yummy healthy pancake trust me you, you, you can use it in your pumpkin and banana and zucchini breads use it in whatever just just consider you know like you can take a cup and and substitute a cup of flour or or whatever just keep in mind um, that when you're using it in breads you're you're going to ha have to probably um, it's just like you trying to use the, any of you who cook gluten-free Typically, you have to add a little more egg or something to bind it together. Uh, I think there's other types of binders, and I can't remember what they are because I don't do the gluten-free thing. I tried a little bit um, every now and then, try to play around with gluten-free recipes just in case there's people out there that, that need to go gluten-free. But uh, since we use a good, a good organic, fresh ground wheat flour, I'm not too worried about it, and we don't eat a lot of bread anyway. But yeah, this, this stuff's beautiful. Trust me, do not throw this out. There's so many uses for this, whether it be co coconut or almond or cashew. That was what it was I didn't care about with the cashew. The milk was, was delicious. But the pulp, it, it, I didn't get a lot of pulp out of it, and it was really strange. It didn't turn out like this. You see how this is just, oh, it's almost already like flour, even though it's not dried yet. Um, the pulp never really did that. It, it was very, it was weird. And if you ever try to make any cashew milk, you'll see what I mean. What I mean with that, but the but the milk itself was was delicious. So there you have it, folks. A beautiful glass of delicious, creamy, wonderful, healthy almond milk with no additives other than a little bit of sweetener and vanilla. None of that garbage they put in the store bought stuff. It's inexpensive and easy to make, and it's so good for you. So please give this a try, and 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 just play with it a bit. Try try some other. Nuts. You know, try the Brazil nut and the cashews and the hemp seeds and the coconut. Trust me, whatever your favorite nut flavor is, you must try this. And stop by the store buster. Read the labels. See what's in that stuff and you'll realize that you're paying too much for something that's labeled as healthy and it's nothing but garbage. Alright? So please enjoy. Thanks for watching. And I hope you'll like and subscribe and maybe share.